Taxi and ride share companies are not required to check a driver's health history. Lift all common and convenient ways to travel, especially in the holidays. One question, how much do you know about the person at the wheel? WRL investigates Colin Browner joins us now live to explain what the law requires and what it doesn't. Colin? <laughs> Well, Deborah and David, whenever we jump into the back of a taxi or a ride chair, we essentially put our safety in the hands of a stranger. Most of those trips are going to turn out just fine. But we looked at state law, which covers that stranger's driving and criminal background, but partially due to privacy concerns, not health. Terror rumble strips revive a nightmare. It's crazy 12 years later, but you hear it and it brings you back. Rumble struck with us months ago, before the height of the pandemic. He recounted February 22, 2008, when he and his wife jumped in an RDU taxi and headed east on 40. Suddenly, the driver had a seizure. And then he started making seizure. some sounds. And those were unintelligible sounds. And I quickly jumped up and had to grab the wheel of the, the, the taxi and steer it from going over the embankment. You know, he had this, like, death grip on the wheel. And I just said, hold on, and we suddenly cut through the, you know, the grass. The crash report obtained by WREL Investigate shows the taxi swerved across the median, barely missed a tractor trailer before getting T-boned by an oncoming car. A combination of anger, shock, you know, just a whole mix of emotions. Portera suffered back injuries, bruises, and more. The psychological toll was totally, was so much more than, than the, the physical, I, I believe. He never researched North Carolina law, which requires taxi and rideshare drivers be properly licensed, pass background checks for driving and criminal history, but doesn't mandate any medical history. What was your reaction when you found out that it happened again. My jaw dropped. I was just like, this has got to be a joke. This, there's no way. Yes, there was. WRAL covered this 2015 RDU taxi crash on Western Boulevard. Court records show the same driver from same seven driver, years 2015. Early, Dormy, didn't take meds and had another seizure at the wheel. Same driver? What, are you kidding Reckless. me? This, driver, this guy's still driving after what happened? Attorneys for the injured passenger went to court against RDU taxi. They're not required... Uh, nor do they uh, ask for an applicant or a driver's uh, medical records. So they do have a duty to the passengers. The case was dismissed with no further information, but the outcome doesn't resolve medical questions about taxi and rideshare drivers. The DMV can demand a driver's medical history and restrict privileges, but only if notified by a doctor, law enforcement, or citizens. And that didn't happen wow. after Dormy's 2008 crash. Hopefully, um... I can be an agent of change. Portera believes a medical evaluation should be required for people who drive other people for a living. Raleigh's taxi permit application now includes questions about health history, including heart problems and epilepsy. He wants lawmakers to expand that across the state. The risk is too great, you know, to, to have this un, pretty much unregulated. Probability may be low, but the impact is extremely high. You know, you're talking about people's livelihoods and lives. Now, we checked the public records, and we found that Dormy's license was suspended after that 2015 crash. We re reached out oh, to him in trouble. the story. He told us the case is over, and he has no further comment. David. And Whoa, serious stuff here. I, I would say that guy's in deep trouble, but, you know, sounds like he got away with it. Anyways, your feedback on this, please be... Please be safe out there. Huge shout out to EV Rideshare Now, um, Rideshare EV Now, the electric vehicle leases to displayride.com and to legalrideshare.com. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a great day. Be safe.